Hi, handsome. How you doing? I'm doing good. Working on the spin uh, spinach, trying to clean it up a little bit. Get it going again. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Yum, yum. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I know you, you're kind of busy, but is there a way you could maybe grow some chummy? Chummy, oh uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Korean melon. Mm -hmm. The only problem is, is that, mm -hmm. you know, all the trellises are full. I got cucumbers and sweet potatoes, and I mean, that, those things are, I don't have no more trellis space left. Mm -hmm. You want them bad, don't you? Yeah, I really love them. You know that. It looks like we're going to be building another trellis. Uh, good morning YouTube family. Today I want to uh, share with you about our new uh, melon trellis and it's a, it's a heavy duty trellis so if you want to grow melons like cantaloupe or, or Nancy likes her Korean melon, it's one called Chummy. It's, a, um, it's about a one pound yellow melon. We'll show you that later in another video but you got to have a trellis that's going to be able to support weight and be a good solid sturdy trellis i wanted to walk you through how we we added this one to our uh to our garden area it's, the first thing i did is i um i laid out my um, bed lines with um the um strings so i knew about where it's going to go and i worked it out with the um little cultivator i ground up and broke the ground and then i had to work on that and rake it out and clean it and i i did that probably four or five times uh, next thing after i did that finally get it cleaned out to where i actually lowered the ground level about four inches to get rid of all the um the grass so the next thing i did was i used these landscape timbers and i laid out the bottom rung of the bed and it doesn't have to be exact remember these are rustic old rough cut landscape timber so it's not precision work so once you get the bottom rung laid out then um you get it kind of straight as straight as you can possibly get it and, and level as you can it doesn't have to be exactly right because when you stack the second row of landscape timbers on it and attach them they actually start to straighten out their self so once you get them going they kind of hang together um, once i got the second rung on top and all nailed together i took the little cultivator and i went back through it again and i um, tilled it again I said, another time and raked it and cleaned it the best i could to try to get as much of the grass and roots out of there as possible next thing i did was i laid out a um, center line down the middle of the um, down the middle of the uh, bed so i could lay out my spacing for the uh, these four by four verticals so I had three of these I needed to get in and I needed them to suit the panels. So I got the, let the spacing laid out and got them sunk. I took the, my post hole diggers and I dug 24 inch deep holes and sunk these four by fours down 24 inches deep. Then I set these in concrete and I used some bracing up here to um, with two by two bracing to support the uh, four by fours and let that concrete sit in the holes overnight. And it makes sure everything is nice and plumb and level and perfect 
and get it set and then just let it stay overnight like that. Next day I came out and uh, after the concrete was set, I removed the temporary bracing, checked it for plumbness. It was all still A-OK. -okay. So I attached these panels. If you come around here, you can see what I use. This is hog fence panel. So um, this is heavy duty, sturdy, heavy duty galvanized fencing that's gonna last many years. It comes 50 inches by eight feet long. So you got your spacing for your um, stanchion set up to suit these panels. When I put the panels on, I wanted to make sure that I have enough room from the bottom of the panel to the ground level. That way when I put in any kind of plants, I can just guide them up the up the uh, my little bamboo stakes that I put in so I can get the plant to the trellis. Once it gets to the trellis, it'll take off. But that leaves me plenty of room down here so I can work with uh, my garden tools and my hose, my rakes and things. So I can get up under there and get, get the ground prepared every year. Next thing I did is I added some turnbuckles and guy wires. I got four of these turnbuckles, or seven inch turnbuckles, 12 gauge wire. And I connect them at the ends like this. Then I came in the middle and I came all the way down to the middle stanchion, put in another set of turnbuckles here, continued down to my last stanchion and I put the final turnbuckle in. This way I can I can pull tension and, and pull um, the, the stanchions tight so I can make sure they're plumb and straight. Well, I can get it adjusted like I need it. The next thing I did after I had the, the panels attached, they're just attached with uh, just fence nails, U-nails. They're attached on the other side here. I came down with some zip ties and I tied on the fence to it and it really doesn't need to it just to did that just to give it a little bit of extra support but it's got it attached there the last thing i did was i come down here to the um, box if you can see right here you can see where i had a um a, a rebar a half inch rebar i drove in there's eight of these around the box they're, they're spaced out about every four feet. And what I do is I drill down through this with a half inch drill bit. And then I put the um, rebar in and I hammer that rebar in with a four inch hammer. I mean a four pound hammer and drive that down into the ground. That gives it some stability, you know, so that the, the, bo the boards don't roll and twist on you in the hot sun. Cause they get wet and hot and then they get dry and then they get wet and then they get hot they'll turn to try to tend to rack on you but having it anchored down with those rebars kind of eliminates that and it, once it gets itself set pretty much after about three weeks it's pretty much the way it'll stay so once you get them in and you get them anchored down good they're good to go so i'm going to leave the bed like it is for a couple of more weeks because I'm going to keep going back through it and working the ground under here. I'm gonna till it with my little cultivator. I'm gonna hand dig, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna keep working that soil until I got as much of the weeds and grass roots and everything out of there as I can possibly get out before I put in my new melon plants. And um, the last step in this process is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add a layer of peat dried compressed peat about three inches thick all the way down this thing then I'm gonna cover in with cover on top of that with uh, black cow cow manure until I bring the level of that planter up to about two inches below the top of this top rung so that um, it's got plenty of um, soil good clean soil to work in when I put my uh, new plants in there so that that's the evolution of our little melon trellis it's uh it's 16 feet long and i made the um the box only three feet wide and the reason for that is when it's growing and there's stuff up here i can easily reach everything i need to reach without ever having to step up in it i don't want to step in it like this 
feet. So if I have it at three feet and it's down the middle at 18 inches, I can easily reach the, um, the fruits. I can reach through it if I want. I can walk all the way around the whole trellis without ever having to step step inside the box. So this is how you you want it. This is a perfect setup for um, for melon trellises. It's heavy duty. When you got a heavy duty loving wife. You got to make some heavy duty treats for her once in a while to keep her happy. So I'm gonna put this out. We're gonna grow our uh, chummy seeds. Uh, grow them from seed and get them started and probably in about two weeks from now three weeks from now I'll be able to come out here and plant them in the ground and get them going so I really appreciate you watching if you like our channel we love for you to subscribe be a part of the family so until I see you next time always remember eyes, hands, fan, we are fed, fed. Give with us Lord, Lord our, our daily, daily bread, bread. Amen. amen have a blessed day Thanks for watching our videos. We really love making them. If you like our videos, please like our Facebook page to get the latest tips and tricks. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the newest video. Like it. It would really inspire and encourage us. But most importantly, share it to encourage others. We'll welcome your comments and questions. Thank you. Have a blessed day.